Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and in tonight's Hanukkah special, we are going to do some dip dyeing. Tonight we are going to dip dye Knit Picks Imagination Yarn into two different colors of the Rit Liquid dye, teal and navy. I love dip dyeing yarn and food coloring and watching how the colors break. But sometimes you might want this effect, but to have a little more control over the hues that you see on your yarn. And this is why we are going to use two colors today that don't break. Um, it's possible that some of the writ dyes might break, but I believe that the teal and navy don't on their own. And we can layer them on top of each other to get something really cool and something that would actually be really hard to achieve with food coloring. I have used Knit Picks Imagination a couple times so far, but I've never tried it with these writ liquid dyes before. Imagination is a very fluffy fingering weight yarn, and it is 50% merino, 25% alpaca, and 25% nylon. This is not super washed, so you want to make sure that you handle it with care. I know that these dyes are really potent, so I want to make sure to not start with too, too much. But one of the good things about dip dyeing is that if you start to have as much color as you want, you can always, always, always just uh, remove it from the pot. I am pre-soaking our three skeins of yarn in plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes, but I have a feeling it'll end up being closer to a couple hours before I am ready to start dyeing the yarn. In my dye pot, I have 16 cups of water, and I'm gonna add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I've done some work with some of the other Rit colors, and I found them on 100 grams, one tablespoon of the charcoal gray gave a really really deep color. I'm going to start with only one tablespoon of the navy just to see how far that goes on our yarn. And then if we need to add more, we'll add more or less. But let's get ready to dye our yarn. Normally I would start with the paler color and then go towards the darker color. But I'm starting with navy right now because I want to have the white to help me have a feel, um, a better feel of how much of the teal I'll then want. Um, and so here's the, the navy dye, and we're going to start with one tablespoon. I suppose I should shake it up. And it's one tablespoon of navy dye. And it's possible that I'll want more of the navy as well. It's just nice to have some kind of starting point. And now our dye bath is hot, but it is not um, boiling. And I don't want it to be at a boil. I want it to be at a bit of a simmer. Um, or just below a simmer, I should say. Alright, and I've got our pre-soaked yarn. Um, may have gotten a little navy on it from my gloves. But let's start dipping. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to sort of mark a little beyond the halfway point with my hand. The nice thing about this, and I should wiggle it a bit, I don't want it to felt, but I do want the color to penetrate. Um, I'm expecting that it'll take a little more time to absorb a lot of color, but I don't know. I haven't tried Rit on this color combination before. Slowly adding more. I'm going back out. Ooh. Yeah, you can see one tablespoon of dye is a lot of color. A lot, lot, lot of color. Um, almost as far as I would want to go with it, but wow, that is a lot of color. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need to soak the rest of that up. I'm wondering 
you know, if the color is striking or, or what. But, all right, I think that this is about as far as I want that navy to go. So I am going to set this aside, letting some of that run off, and I'm gonna to need to go get some more yarn to help soak up the rest of that dye. But let me first show you where we got with this color. And actually, maybe I'll wanna add some more. Um, yeah, we're, we're still doing really, really nicely, but it's actually sort of a nice soft medium navy versus like a really, really dark navy. But I'm curious if sort of I squeeze the end. Yeah, I mean there's extra dye in there, but we do have some gradient there, so that's good. Oh, it's looking a little more red on camera. But anyway, I'm gonna let this sit um, and cool off a bit, and then I'll go get something else to help soak up this navy dye. Here is some dry swish decay. This is 100% superwash merino. Um, and I'm just gonna add it and go for um, a semi solid tonal color. And this also should give a bit of a sense if I've way overloaded the dye. Um, that's a beautiful color. Um, maybe I don't have enough acid, but let's go ahead and leave this in there for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see how it's doing. But it looks like, yeah, it looks like we, oh yeah, we've totally cleared that. Um, and we've got a nice, just semi-solid navy yarn here. Now, if we're to compare the Swish DK, and well, it's a little hard because of the steam, to our Imagination Gradient, and there's no question that this is, the Swish is a lot deeper, more saturated than the navy. But I'm sort of okay with where the Imagination yarn ended up. I like that soft navy. Um, so I'm going to proceed and we're going to dip dye the other end. So if I squeeze out some of that water, I think all of the color is in the yarn. So the heat, okay, there's a hint of the navy, but most of the color is in the yarn versus squeezing out. I think that the heat that was trapped in here helped that color finish binding. After I wrung it out a bit, the color's a little more muted, which again, I am okay with. And in fact, I could conceivably put the whole thing into the teal um, as we're dipping, but let's just see how this goes. Once again, I am going to start with one tablespoon of the teal. And I have no idea if this will be as saturated or as potent as the navy was or not. I'm gonna put that in and give it a little stir. And again, we can always do, I guess, a third dip with more color if we feel like it's necessary. And now, let's start dipping. That's pretty. Okay, getting close to the point of overlap. That's really nice. I might need my spoon to help with the the dip and we go in and then we come back up and I can't tell that might be starting to clear but I just want to go slowly and some people have asked me sometimes why I don't just set and leave it and it's because I like my dips to be a little more gradual 
um, and I don't want to felt anything, but by moving it a little bit, um, you can help get color penetration, um, I guess, more throughout. Okay, now it's going to be mega heavy. Okay, you know what? I think that this might be, is it? It's heavy. It's hard to say. I think I am going to go ahead and add, slowly add the whole thing in and just let it all sort of soak up this teal. So then we'll have something that's like a broken teal but with um, like more and more blue on one end. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this to our pot and yeah, I'm curious if we'll see some of the teal, um, I don't know, if we'll see some of the navy leak out, if we'll, who knows, I haven't done, I've dip dyed with these writ dyes, but I haven't done something quite like this. Our pot is actually fairly crowded at the moment, but I'm going to reduce the temperature, and I do have a metal spoon on hand. So we can check. I'm a little worried about the color not being able to penetrate all of it, but we actually have the tongs as well, so I could pick up the yarn and see. But I'm really liking how sort of subtle this colorway is, Oof. Um, especially in contrast to some brights. Um, this isn't something that we usually see with breaking food coloring, but the tones and the sort of dipped from both ends does give a similar feel to the yarn and to the final yarn. So anyway, at this point, I'm going to cover this, leave the heat on low, and we'll come back and check on it in 10 minutes. It has been 10 minutes. We are still heating the yarn, but we are just below a boil. So. There's not any bubbly here. We definitely still have our colors. And there's a little bit of the teal left, but a lot of it seems to be in our yarn. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and let the yarn cool down in the pot. We'll see if it absorbs any more color. Um, the more that it absorbs means the less we have to rinse the yarn later, but yeah, I'm I'm thrilled with this colorway. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll be back when it's cool, and we'll we'll take it out of the pot and take a closer look. While we are waiting for the other yarn to cool, let's rinse our navy 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 yarn. Um, it has cooled completely, and this is oh, <laughs> I splash some cool tap water. And maybe there is a tiny hint of color, but guys, that's basically clear. I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap just to see if we get any bleeding Sometimes soap causes some, some loss of exercise and oh. I'd say maybe there's a tiny bit of color, but given the depth and the richness of the color in our yarn, that's not very much. So I'm going to rinse this a couple more times and hang this yarn up to dry. Here is our dip dyed yarn and that water is completely clear. So now I'm going to go remove the yarn from the pot um, so that way we can let it cool completely so we can start washing it. I want to take a lot of care not to agitate the yarn too much because I do not want to felt it. To take a little extra care, I am going to wash these skeins one at a time. Um, this will give me a little more chance for movement to let the fibers sort of soak in the water without the pan being too crowded. And there is a bit of bleeding that we see right away. 
it looked like, it looked like the water had cleared, but when I removed the yarn, there was definitely some teal left in there. I hope this won't require a lot of washing, but I think if this continues bleeding for a while, then I might um, I might consider adding, re-adding the yarn to some more vinegar to let it set a little longer. I'm not using cool water, I'm using just lukewarm water. And already that seems like there's a little bit less bleeding than there was with the first round. But again, this is not bad. So I'm being, trying to be careful um, to not agitate the fiber so much. Uh, I mean, I've never felted this yarn or anything, I just want to be careful, but check out this colorway. It's just beautiful. And depending on the project, you could get something that feels a little more like micro stripes or something that feels a little bit, um, it could spiral um, in some kind of pattern as well. So, but oh yeah, that water is starting to clear. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of clear dish soap um, just because if there is unbound dye, I'd rather it come out now than um, at a less convenient time. You can see that a little more is coming out. Um, but I expect that within a couple more rinses, the water will be clear. Um, so I'm going to keep rinsing and I'll let you know if there's anything unexpected. This is actually skein number two. And after a couple of rinses, the water is clear. So I'm going to finish up the third one, hang them up to dry, and show you what the yarn looks like. Where does your imagination take you with this colorway? Um, I, we go from this, it's almost a reddish denim blue through this teal. And the colors overall are muted and subtle, oceany and stormy, and just absolutely beautiful. We created these yarns by dip dyeing the yarn twice. First, we dip dyed the yarn into some navy writ dye, and then we dip dyed the other end into the teal, eventually letting some of the um, leftover teal go all over the entire skeins. I am intrigued by the way that the colors came out fairly muted. Three skeins of yarn at a time is pretty heavy for me to keep holding up. Um, so I did actually end up using a second skein of just superwash wool yarn, or sorry, I guess a fourth skein of superwash wool yarn to soak up the leftover navy. And the colors from this leftover yarn are sharper and way more blue than the softer feel they have on the imagination base. Imagination is 50% merino, 25% alpaca, and 25% nylon versus this 100% superwash merino yarn. I know that alpaca blends absorb dye a little bit slower, and you can get super vibrant colors on them. Um, and part of the tonal difference between the two has to probably do with some of the, um, the fact that this was a leftover dye, and so whatever colors, maybe some reds if it was a mixture, absorbed first. Um, I am still pretty amazed how different they feel from one another, um, but certainly I know I want to play around more with this imagination base in the future. One of the reasons why I love dip dyeing is that you can have some nice control over the colorway. As you're adding your yarn into your pot, you can see how much color is absorbing. You can get a more, if you dip slower, you can get a more severe gradient, and if you dip really quickly, you can get a much subtler gradient. Normally I try to start with the lighter color and then go into the darker one, but I wanted to see what kind of effect I would get with the navy because I didn't want um, one color to overpower the other. I really wanted it to feel um, balanced in terms of this level of saturation in these skeins. What will this yarn look like when I knit with it? This is a kind of question I get a lot, and one of the big reasons why I decided to create the Hanukkah sampler. 
Um, this way, when I do eight different techniques, people can have mini skeins of all these different dye jobs and make their own kind of swatch to see how, different ways you can get the colors to pattern. With a dip dyed repeating colorway like this, you might get micro stripes or you could get something that pulls in a spiral, like up a hat. But it really depends on how many stitches, if you're going in the round or knitting back and forth. There are many different factors that um, can give a final project such a different look when you're starting with the same yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that this video piques your imagination as you think about different ways to play around with color. There are many, many different dip dyeing videos on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. It is one of my absolute favorite techniques, and I knew I needed an example of it in this Hanukkah week. You could dip dye into two colors, three, four. It's a way that gives you some controlled application of a color, but it's maybe a little less control than hand painting, or a little more control than low immersion. And you certainly can get a very even color um, versus hand painting, which can look um, a little more uh, modeled at times. And it's just another way with so many possibilities. You don't just have to do one color dark to light. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. I will be back tomorrow night with another dyeing video. And I can't wait for you to see the colors that we created. Happy holidays, everyone.